Part 18 of Sona's Chance is here I know I know won't hold the intro to long let's begin the part 18. Chapter 67, Sona's Chance, a high school DXD fanfiction written by Christopher Zazel. Chapter 67, Things, Stuff and More. Scene, Underworld, Phoenix Mansion. Okay, now that's a big house. Issei was pointing at the large structure in front of him. Sona, Seraphal, Yusaka and Tsubaki were accompanying Issei as the group made their way closer toward the golden gates of the estate. Issei's hand was instantly pulled back down and placed back into Seraphal's hand. Size isn't everything, anyway, hold my hand, boyfriend Kuhn. Seraphal was giggling as she pulled the nervous brown-haired teen along. Sona was internally facepalming as she held Issei's other hand tightly. The Phoenixes aren't the types to use subtlety, rather, they enjoy flaunting their power. Era era, I think it's a beautiful home. Lots of room for little ones, foo foo foo. The smiling Yusaka was walking along next to Tsubaki. Besides, I find it endearing that the little devil's parents want to thank you for saving her. You should think if this act is a form of respect toward you. Tsubaki couldn't help but agree with Yusaka's logic as she nodded. Indeed, Yusaka-sama is correct, there are those in the underworld, from high-class families, many of which would never offer any gesture of recognition, mainly the old Mao families. Sona nods in agreement with her queen. It's something that needs to be done away with. I can't stand the arrogance of aristocracy. The C-tree heiress caught herself speaking her mind out loud and quickly stopped speaking with a hint of embarrassment in her face. Foo foo foo, Sona, darling, you are such a kind-hearted girl. In fact, you probably have the largest heart out of all of us. I suppose I should give some credit to your older sister for raising you properly. Yusaka giggles into her kimono sleeve. Instantly blushing, Sona looks toward her own feet. I, 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 well, I don't know what to. You aren't wrong, Yusaka. Sona is totally a bleeding heart. I wouldn't have it any other way. Issei slightly squeezes the sea tree heiress's hand within his own. Yay, I raised my little Sotan to have a big heart. Magical girl powers are real. I told you, Sona. For the power of love was victorious once again. Seraphal releases Issei's hand temporarily in order for her to twirl around in celebration. Milky Chan always saves the day. Milky Chan is here to stay. Milky. Eek. The Mao finally notices a pair of blue eyes staring back at her from the now open front door entrance of the Phoenix home. Ravel Phoenix, who was wearing a sky blue colored dress which hugged the well developed short stack's rather voluptuous body perfectly, was quiet at first, that was until her eyes met with Issei. A large and almost nervous smile took hold of the younger Phoenix heiress's face. Oh, um, welcome, Issei Hyodo. She then turns her attention to the other four ladies accompanying him. Oh, you brought company along with you. Then her eyes moved downward and toward Issei's hands. Um, okay, well, uh, please come in. That almost nervous smile of Ravel's was now very nervous. Walking into the large home, Ravel quietly led the way down an impressive set of decorated hallways, all which seemed to be embroidered in gold leaf. Hiodo, you actually came. A familiar voice from behind the group caused the majority of the party to turn, all aside from a smirking Yasaka. Issei couldn't help but smirk once he heard the voice, however, when he met eyes with Riser Phoenix, that smirk turned into a toothy grin. Of course, after all, someone's gotta shut you up, for a second time. Riser returns the grin, after dinner, punk, after dinner, name the place, I'll be there. Issei nods, seen familiar forest, so, you three took over the familiar master's job. I wasn't told, anything of the sort, Sears X had a look of suspicion. Nodding, the one named Jess explains. Team Knock it is a new and more efficient way of collecting familiars. The old ways of the familiar master are done and over with. In fact, we have it on good authority that the person you refer to as, Ash Ketchum on drugs, is now in rehab as we speak. Jamie speaks next while throwing an index finger into the air. Unlike the old addict, we are sober and so much more fun to be around. I mean, look at our amazing outfits. We've practiced and practiced our choreography, we've even trained this stupid dog Mon how to talk. So, give us a chance, that's all we ask. The now known, dog Mon, reacts. Barketh, that's right, Grafia, Sirzex and little Rius all tilt their heads. Sounds reasonable, I suppose. The silver-haired maid agreed. 
Both Grimori siblings look back at Grafia with shocked expressions. Really? You actually buy that story? Sirzex asks in amazement. Little Rias nods in agreement with her older brother. Brushing a stray leaf from her blouse, Grafia replies while showing a serious expression. It really doesn't matter who runs this forsaken place, as long as the end results remain the same. Not finding a reason to argue against his wife's logic, Sirzex simply shrugs his shoulders. Little Rias turns the flashlight off on her yellow hard hat while folding her map. So, team knock it, I need to find a very specific familiar. Can you help? Placing the map back into her pocket, the little redhead then pulls out a Polaroid picture and presents it to the three. Studying the picture, Jess, Jamie and Dog Mon all smile. Jess immediately points in a specific direction. Those are very common here, we saw a few of them back down that path about half a kilometer. Jamie shows a slight quiver in her body language. I don't know why you would want to have anything to do with those things. Scene Phoenix Mansion, Dining Room. Ah, there he is an oh my, does he look absolutely dashing. Lady Phoenix stood from her chair while smiling warmly toward Issei as he walked into the room. Lord Phoenix remained sitting as he took a sip from his wine glass. Yes, good, um hum. The lady and lord of the house were dressed up in fine attire. Lady Phoenix was wearing a golden colored dress along with a plethora of matching golden jewelry. Her blonde drills were also decorated with golden hair pieces which made her look very important. The lord was wearing a white dinner jacket along with a golden bow tie as he took another sip from his wine glass. The two also noticed Issei's entourage. Seraphal Leviathan was a well-known high-class devil within the underworld and this brought up a considerable amount of questions regarding her relationship with Ravel's hopeful fiancé. Both Lord and Lady looked back at one another while each raised a single eyebrow. Fu fu fu, my oh my, this is quite the extravagant home, Lady and Lord Phoenix. Giggling into her kimono, Yusaka proceeded to make a simple yet polite bow. As that, Lord Phoenix stood from his seat finally as his blue eyes widened in shock. Lady Phoenix snapped at her husband while nudging him with her shoulder. Don't gawk dear, it's rude. She then looked back toward the blonde fox woman while smiling politely. Ah, yes, you must be the great Yusaka of Kyoto, it truly is an honor to have you in our home. Both Yusaka and Lady Phoenix now stare at one another, each with plastic smiles. Then suddenly, both women begin to laugh. Foo 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 foo. Foo 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 foo. Lord Phoenix now grows a nervous tick mark as he sits back down. Oh no. As Lady Phoenix and Yusaka continue their formal laughing match, Sona speaks up. Greetings, from House Seatree, Lord and Lady Phoenix. I am Sona Seatree, it's a pleasure. Adjusting her glasses, Sona attempts not to cringe at the continued laughing from the two blonde women. Lord Phoenix, who now has a defeated expression, simply nods as gestures for everyone to sit down. Ravel then takes a quick glance around the room. Where is brother? Calm yourselves. Everyone, Riser is here. Ha ha ha, looks like mother is having fun. The blonde haired and maroon suit wearing Riser Phoenix walked casually into the dining room. So, you didn't bring, tiny mode Rias, along EHH. The Phoenix heir was now scowling toward Issei. Deciding to ignore the consistent laughing from his wife and lady Phoenix, Issei replies back with a forced grin. She didn't want to ruin her appetite while seeing your ugly mug. Both Yusaka and Lady Phoenix stop laughing and turn their attention onto Issei. Riser is taken back however he continues his scowl. After dinner, backyard, don't be late. The maroon-clad Phoenix then walks out of the room. Seems like I lost my appetite, I'll be training instead, Riser out. The room went silent for a moment, that was until Lady Phoenix clapped her hands together. Well then, how about we all sit down and have a nice meal together? Doesn't that sound delightful? Scene, Hyodo home. Knock knock knock. Mr. and Mrs. Hyodo turned their attention toward the front door as they were sitting in their living room and watching a movie together. Knock knock knock. I'll get the door, Mickey. Mr. Hyodo stood from the couch and made his way to the front door. After answering the door, two females were standing at the entrance. Guro Hyodo was pretty sure he was staring at a mother and daughter as both ladies had pitch black hair and pale skin. The older one was wearing a black kimono with a yellow sash and prayer beads at her side. The younger one was wearing a plain and black dress. At further glance, the little girl was also barefoot. 
Vero was at a loss for words however he managed to pick himself back up and ask the question that was on his mind. Um, hello, are you two here for my son, Issei? Mr. Hyoto was smiling nervously. Both women looked back at one another and then back at Mr. Hyoto. As the two girls nodded, Mr. Hyoto shrugs and gestures for them to come inside. Guro then shouts toward his wife in the living room. Mickey, can you start up some tea? I have a feeling it's going to be another long night. Hum, what now? Mrs. Hyoto walked into the hallway as her eyes widened. Oh my, wait, wait, don't tell me. Let me guess. Mickey points toward the older woman in the kimono while smiling excitedly. You must be another of my son's wives, right? Before the baffled-looking black-haired woman could reply, Mrs. Hyoto then points toward the little girl. And you must be his other daughter. The smaller girl tilted her head while showing little emotion. I am not a daughter, I am Ophis. The older of the two starts to giggle. Hehehehe. <laughs> NYA, I'm not Issei's wife, he he he. Both Mickey and Garo are now the ones tilting their heads in confusion. Scene, Phoenix home. At the very long and decorative table, everyone was quietly eating their meal which consisted of traditional Japanese cuisine such as fish, rice and a plethora of delicacies such as yakitori, sukumono pickles, keizeki, udon, soba and many other amazing foods. Breaking the silence, Lady Phoenix clears her throat after a sip of wine. Well, then, Mr. Hyodo. Please, tell us all a little about yourself. Do you have plans for the future? What would you like to achieve after you graduate from high school? Issei, feeling on the spot takes a large gulp of water. Um, well, that's a great question, Lady Phoenix ma'am. To be honest, I really don't know. So many things have happened so very quickly that I can hardly get a grip on what I'm doing right this very instant, let alone thinking ahead into the future. Nodding. Lady Phoenix looks back at her husband, who nods back at her. I see, well, I wanted to tell you something, regarding my daughter, Ravel. The said Ravel Phoenix, who was sitting across from Issei, blushed slightly while attempting to hide her eyes as she stared at her plate of food. Issei smiles, sure, what did you want to talk about? Lord Phoenix spoke up instead of his wife. Ravel is no longer a part of Riser's peerage. She is a free bishop now. Do you understand? Issei Hyodo. The older Phoenix was now staring seriously back toward the team. Lady Phoenix nods and giggles slightly. Foo foo. Yes, indeed, my sweet little Ravel is a free bird as they say. Issei slowly nods while not understanding the meaning. Oh, well, that's good. Issei looks toward Sona, Seraphal and then Yusaka. That's good, right, Sona facepalms. Seraphal smiles childishly and squirms in her chair. Yusaka closes her eyes while showing her infamous crescent-shaped smile. Sona's Chance, a high school DxD fanfiction written by Christopher Zazel. Chapter 68, Three Glasses of Milk. Sona stands from her chair suddenly while pointing at a now-flustered-looking Issei. Hyodo, I knew it, I told you that something like this was going to happen. Sister, Seraphal stood up and placed a hand on Sona's shoulder while showing a very excited smile. So Tan, you are so cute right now. That jealousy is so adorable. He he he. Ravel gritted her teeth however she remained quiet as she nervously was twirling one of her drills around her index finger. Lady and Lord Phoenix both had puzzled looks plastered to their faces. Yusaka was elegantly sipping a cup of tea while her crescent-shaped smile adorned her flawless face. Subaki continued to switch her stoic glance from Issei to Sona. Issei had a terrified expression the moment Sona pointed toward him accusingly. Seraphal noticed how the room suddenly got quiet and decided to break the ice as her smile grew even more. So um, Lord and Lady Phoenix, might I ask what you were implying in regards to your lovely daughter? Both the Lord and the Lady glanced at once another and then nodded. Clearing her throat, Lady Phoenix spoke up with some grace behind her tone. Ahem, yes, Issei Hyodo, pawn of the House of Grimori, I would like to place our daughter within your care. She will be attending Kuo Academy and this will be her first time living in the human world. Issei nodded, sure, but what do you mean by, placing her in my care? Lord Phoenix spoke up this time, we understand that this may be an inconvenience for you, but as my wife informed you, Ravel isn't familiar with the human world, so living on her own would be a terrible decision and we as parents cannot allow such a thing. With that, would it be alright if Ravel were to live within your home? More so. 
Would you keep an eye on my precious little one when she goes to school? Lord Phoenix now had an almost comical expression while fake tears began to waterfall from his eyes. Issei thought about it for a moment and then slowly turned his attention to Ravel, who was sitting nervously at the table while nervously twirling her blonde drills with her finger. He remembered how she looked, back at the underworld market, being bullied by those other devil jerks. The letters, KFC, continued to repeat themselves over and over again within Issei's mind as he stared at the blonde devil. You guys can count on me, Issei suddenly blurted out without realizing it. Sona was about to protest, however Seraphal cupped her sister's mouth with her palm as she giggled excitedly. Ha 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 ha, Yusaka lifted an eyebrow and then one of her fox ears, however she continued to pay attention to her. T while taking another sip, Issei turned his attention to a struggling Sona, then a winking Seraphal and finally his wife, Yusaka. After a moment, Yusaka glanced back toward Issei while smiling. I don't see a problem with it. Sona attempted to pull her sister's hand from her mouth but it was all in vain. Seraphal then happily spoke up. So, Ravel Chan will be living with us from now on. The giddy Mao turned her attention to a now blushing Ravel Phoenix. Don't you worry about the human world, it's not that scary. And also, I am completely fine with you living with us. Sona attempted to angrily speak up, however her mouth was still muffled by Seraphal's hand. Inside of the calculating mind of the sea tree heiress, she was already stressed enough having to share her boyfriend with her older sister and Yusaka of Kyoto. Add the fact that Issei's peerage members, Akino, Kaneko and Asia, were slowly making their advances and then there were those two damned fallen angels, Kalawarner and Mittelt. Damn it, Sona thought. He is getting that damned harem that he's been dreaming about. No more girls. I won't stand for it. The Leviathan Mao chuckled once again. He he he. I think my younger sister is trying to say that she agrees, Ravel Chan can stay with us. Sona immediately attempted to shake her head no. Tsubaki, who was watching the entire situation with her usual stoic attitude, decided to say something. Seraphal Sama, I don't think that's what the president was conveying. Instantly, a golden fox tail had wrapped itself around the vice president of the student council's mouth. Foo 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 foo, Yusaka giggled into her kimono sleeve. Tsubaki is clearly mistaken, foo 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 foo. Lady and Lord Phoenix both raise eyebrows. Ravel makes sudden glances at Issei however instantly turns her attention elsewhere the moment Issei notices. Seraphal suddenly shows a nervous smile and proceeds to pull Sona along with her. I am going to have a little talk with my little sister. We'll be right back, she then looks toward Yusaka. Maybe a talk with all three girls might be in order, Yusaka-chan. Placing her tea down onto the table, Yusaka then releases Tsubaki's mouth with her tail and slowly stands up before making a courteous bow toward Lady and Lord Phoenix. Foo foo foo, I apologize for the sudden intrusion into our delicious meal, but we won't be but a moment. Lady Phoenix nods while Lord Phoenix simply shrugs his shoulders. Before Sarah fall, Yusaka and a forced Sona leave the room, Issei decides that he wants to know what's going on, so he also stands up while making a short bow toward Ravel's parents. Um, I'll be right back too. Once the group of four left the dining room, they headed down the long hallway until they found what looked to be a smoking lounge and it was empty. Seraphal pointed toward the room while Yusaka and Issei followed. As Seraphal pushed Sona onto a large and leather couch, she then shut the door. Yusaka, Seraphal and Issei stood around this large and wooden paneled room with stained glass windows while looking at a disheveled Sona, who was angrily sitting on the couch with her cheeks puffed out. Seraphal places her hands against her hips while showing a very rare and angry expression. All right, real talk, Sona. The Mao's blue eyes were very stern. The way you just acted is completely unacceptable. Issei kept quiet though he had to admit that Seraphal was kind of scary right now. Yusaka had her eyes closed as she was seriously nodding at Seraphal's words. But Sarah Tan, Sona spoke out with some tears in her eyes. Those Phoenixes are trying to take my Issei. I am not stupid, Lady and Lord Phoenix are trying to play matchmaker and get Issei into their birdbrain family. Seraphal suddenly got quiet, however a very foreign and terrifying aura was beginning to manifest from her body. It was a mix of black, violet and dark blue energies that continued to double in size. Before Issei knew it, his knees felt very heavy as did the rest of his body. He felt as if he hadn't slept in weeks and was about to pass out at any moment. 
Yasaka opened her eyes and noticed her husband's reaction to her childhood friend's power. Seraphal, that's enough, Yasaka demanded as she reached for Issei's shoulder while using a few of her tails to steady him. Suddenly, the Leviathan Mao blinked a few times as her rage subsided. She noticed at once that her little sister was curled up on a couch while staring back at her with tears in her violet eyes. As if a light switch had been turned off, Issei felt his energy returning to him while realizing that Yusaka was steadying him. Oh, um, I'm sorry about that. Issei smiled nervously, however he had some strain left over, it was in his eyes. Smiling warmly, Yusaka pulled Issei into her while hugging him tightly. Era era, sorry about what, it's fine, there, there. Seraphal turned her attention back onto Sona while showing a sad smile. Oh, I'm sorry so tan, I didn't mean to lose my patience, but you aren't seeing the bigger picture, are you? Yasaka got her hugs worth from Issei and finally released him before kissing his forehead. Seraphal continued as Sona was now pouting on the couch. Think about it, the house of Citri, partnered up with the house of Phoenix. I thought you were smart, so tan. It's true that an alliance with the Phoenixes and Grimoires wouldn't work because of obvious circumstances, however that might not be the case with us. As unique as this situation is, if Issei were to get romantically involved with Ravel. Sona was about to argue again, however Seraphal gave her sister that look, which quieted her down. As I was saying, if Issei were to marry Ravel, of course he would be married to you and I first that would create an unbreakable bond between houses. Issei spoke up before Sona could respond. Wait, don't I get a say in all of this? Instantly, Yasaka, Seraphal and Sona all yell back in unison. No, seen, Hyodo home. Oh my, what a very sad story, Ophis chan A very deeply saddened Mickey Hyodo reached for and held both of Ophis's little hands. You poor sweet little thing. To think, a mean bully like that, great red, person, showing up like that and taking your home away from you. Suddenly, Ophis found herself tilting her head in confusion as she was now being hugged tightly by Issei's mother. Well, don't you worry about a thing, sweetheart, you can stay here with us. Mickey then looks up and at a sad looking Kuroka, who has her Nako ears in a lowered position. Issei's mother, while still holding on to a perplexed Ophis, smiles warmly. Of course I mean the both of you. Kuroka's ears pop back up and her frown turns into a bright smile. NYA. She then points at herself. Mickey nods while she begins to brush Ophis's hair. Of course, after all, there's plenty of room. Because of circumstances, our modest home has almost tripled in size, so I'm sure we can make the two of you girls comfortable. Kuroka stares back at Ophis, who was being bombarded with affection. Ophis managed to return Kuroka's stare, then both women show slight smirks while nodding to one another. Suddenly a red and glowing sigil began to manifest on the dining room floor. Mickey giggled as she noticed it. Ha ha ha. Looks like our little red princess is back. I hope she found what she was looking for. Red flash. Stepping out of a vanishing and red glowing teleportation circle was none other than little Rias Gremoy. She had a very happy though very exhausted expression. I'm back, Miss Hyodo, could I get a tall glass of milk, please? Rias made her way to the dining table as she removed her yellow hard hat. Mickey Hyodo finally released Ophis from her tight hug while smiling back toward Rias. Of course, sweetheart, Ophis Chan, would you like a glass as well? Before Ophis could respond, Kuroka jumped from her seat while placing one of her arms into the air as she smiled brightly. NYA, I want some milk too. Then the room got suddenly quiet. Rias was blankly staring at both Ophis and then Kuroka. Ophis stared back with her usual stoic expression while Kuroka was playfully waving at the little Grimori princess. What are they doing here? Rias was pointing at both women with an accusing glance. Ophis and the wanted devil, Kuroka. I knew it, you two are after Issei. I knew it, I knew it. Kuroka giggled into her kimono sleeve while Ophis continued to her blank stare. Miki Hyodo shook her head while ignoring little Rias's fit. Well then, three glasses of milk, coming right up so please sit down. Issei's mother happily walked toward the refrigerator. Tell me, Rias darling, did you get my son a present or something? As if she were a puppy, distracted by a squirrel, Rias completely forgot what she was upset about and promptly sat down at the table. With a bright smile on her little face, Rias replied. Oh, yes, 
My brother and sister-in-law helped out, but yes, I think I found something that Issei will really enjoy. Mickey nodded as she was pouring milk into glasses. I see, I see. Well, if you don't mind, tell me, what did you get him? Rias produced a medium-sized box that looked to be made from onyx as she showed a victorious expression. Well, it's not quite um, trained, yet, so I better not let it out yet. Rias remembered her brother, Grafia and those other three degenerates and what happened when the item in question was found. Shaking her head from those thoughts, Rias smiled once more. Yeah, I think it should stay in here, at least until I give it to Issei. Mickey raised an eyebrow as she approached the table with the three glasses of milk. Is it dangerous? Rias, I don't want something that is going to harm our family living in this house with us. Rias shook her head while nervously smiling. Dangerous isn't the word I would use for this. Don't worry, Miss Hyodo, it's not going to hurt anyone. Ophis was staring at the onyx box and Rias noticed. She instantly took the box from the table and placed it into her lap so that it was out of eyesight. Don't be nosy. Tilting her head, Ophis moves her gray eyes up at Rias. What is nosy? The infinite dragon god now touches her own nose while waiting for an answer to her question. Sona's Chance, a high school DXD fanfiction written by Christopher Zazel. Chapter 69, Epic Showdown, Riser Phoenix vs Issei Hyodo. EHH, so, you showed up. That's good. Riser Phoenix was popping his own neck at the sight of Issei as he walked into the estate's backyard. Following Issei were Yusaka, Seraphal, Sona, Tsubaki, Ravel, Lord and Lady Phoenix as well as a few of the manor's staff. Issei nodded while showing a mild grin. Yeah, dude, I've been kinda looking forward to this. Riser squares up while returning his own grin. No tricks this time, Hyodo. Issei's grin intensifies. I won't need tricks to beat you not this time. Seraphal immediately ran in between the two boys who were staring daggers at one another while expressing sheer excitement. Okay, okay, now just hold your horses. Since this isn't technically a raiding game, being a Mao, it falls upon my cute little self to referee this fight. Issei nodded seriously while Riser scoffed. Seraphal then looks over toward Lady and Lord Phoenix. Don't worry, I will produce a barrier so nothing on your property becomes collateral damage. Both the lord and the lady look at one another and then shrug. Foo 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 foo, don't waste your time and effort, Malaviathan, allow me to show you what a true thoroughbred Phoenix can achieve, foo foo foo. Lady Phoenix finally stopped laughing obnoxiously as she now looked down at her daughter. Well, dear, let's not wait for the grass to grow. Nodding and blushing at the same time, Ravel closes her blue eyes while she is holding her arms outward. Suddenly a bright and orange globe appears in front of her which begins to triple in size, over and over until it consumes the entirety of Fennec's mansion, including the estate property. Suddenly, all eyes were on little Ravel. Even Sona and Tsubaki seemed impressed as Ravel was younger than they were. Yusaka quietly blushed as she glanced toward the little Fennec heiress. Issei couldn't believe it, considering Ravel had retired before they ever had the chance to fight. Back when Issei fought for Rias's freedom from marriage, the team couldn't help but wonder what kind of power little Ravel had. Today, it seems he got his answer. Ravel noticed Issei staring back at her with some admiration in his eyes, this made the blonde devil blush intensely. Hey, bastard, stop staring at my sister. Riser throws a fireball into the underworld's purple-colored sky. Turning back toward Riser, Issei speaks at Seraphal while glaring deeply at the blonde, Kentucky Fried Chicken. Milky Chan, can we get started? Riser tilts his head. The fuck is this Milky Chan nonsense? Seraphal grows a pair of heart shapes in her blue eyes while staring back at Issei. Yes, number one fan. Alright, the both of you, get ready, get set, and go. Seraphal then jumped into the air while making a cute pose. Riser doesn't waste a moment and tosses an assortment directly at Issei. Take this, you son of a bitch. Seeing the barrage of flaming death headed his way, Issei freaks out. Oh shit, um, boosted gear, balance breaker. Balance breaker, everyone aside from Yusaka guards their eyes from the red flash that accompanied Issei's transformation. Lord and Lady Phoenix were marveling at the red dragon emperor, in his scale mail. Meanwhile Sona folded her arms, thinking this whole contest was just downright stupid and pointless. Tsubaki was actually showing interest in what was happening, breaking her usual stoic facade. 
Yusaka curiously watched Little Ravel, as the girl seemed transfixed on Issei. The Fox Queen decided to take a small peek into the little Phoenix heiress's soul, just as she has done with everyone involved with Issei. Ravel suddenly sneezed a few times after gaining a very intense blush. Meanwhile Yusaka simply, smirked and nodded to herself in approval. Blast! The balls of fire hit their mark. Issei flew back several feet as his entire armored body was aflame. Ouch! 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 Dedrag! This fucking hurts, dude! Issei was now jumping up and down while proceeding to roll around in the dirt to extinguish his flames. Dedrag roared from Issei's gauntlet. Calm down! Partner, it's just pain. This is nothing compared to those holy swords. You are the Red Dragon Emperor of Domination, ACT like it and get the fuck off the ground. Realizing that Dedrag might be right, Issei stood up while grinding his teeth in pain underneath his helmet. Fuck you Riser. Boost. Boost. Riser scoffed while grinning. Well, a worm like you should go back to rolling on the ground. Ha ha. Riser made a joke. Before the blonde devil could laugh at his own joke he felt a gut-wrenching pain toward his abdomen. Looking down, he saw Issei's helmeted green eyes, staring back up at him. As we pan out slightly, the scene shows Issei very low toward the ground with a single fist extended. This fist happened to meet the stomach of Riser. It happened so quickly that only Seraphal and Yusaka were able to keep up. Riser uses his Phoenix Fire to repair the internal damage from Issei's gut punch. Boost. Issei cries out before using his other fist on Riser's face. Not enjoying this feeling of being hit relentlessly, Riser grew angry and attempted to punch Issei back, however. Boost, boost, a sudden kick to Riser's stomach sent him flying 30 to 40 feet in the opposite direction. Issei had kicked him in the exact spot he had just repaired, which made the pain twice as bad for the Phoenix Devil. Damn, you Hyodo. Riser stopped himself from crashing into the large and demonic-looking vineyards that were in front of him by digging his boots into the earth and grass, leaving a pair of streaks across the large lawn. Issei was huffing and puffing on the inside of his helmet while maintaining a battle stance. Quit holding back, you flaming chicken. Boost, boost. Suddenly, Riser's eyes looked as though they were going to bulge from their sockets as his face began to glow beet red. That's it, you're dead, shrimp dragon fuck. The blonde Phoenix Devil was now completely on fire as he continued to scream obscenities. Burn, you son of a bitch. Burn. The flaming riser now darted toward the scale male clad Issei. Boost, boost, explosion. Take this, you Kentucky fried asshole. Dragon shot. Suddenly a ball of crimson energy formed in front of Issei as he quickly punched said ball, directly toward the flaming Phoenix. Seeing a red glow of energy headed toward him, Riser chose to ignore it as he figured he would heal from whatever Hyodo threw at him. This was a mistake. Once the red energy blast hit Riser, his momentum had instantly stopped as a crimson blast pushed him backwards. Issei immediately dropped to one of his knees in exhaustion. Laying on the grass, Riser laid silently. Sona released a long-held breath while Subaki adjusted her glasses. Ravel looked both happy but also slightly concerned as she watched her brother's motionless body on the grass lawn. Both Lady and Lord Phoenix turned their attention toward Seraphal, who was quietly watching both Issei and a seemingly unconscious Riser. Then, really, is that all you've got? Riser suddenly stood up as he casually brushed his maroon suit off. I was expecting a lot more from you, but alas, it looks like you're about out of juice. Riser then cracks his knuckles while he grins at a kneeling and exhausted looking Issei. Shit, is that it? Is that all I'm capable of doing? Even with everyone's help, I'm still weak as fuck, my body is out for the count, I can hardly move, damn it. Issei was shouting in, his mind while feeling hopeless. Partner, just wait. Dedrag spoke rather calmly. Wait for what? Just watch and shut up. Dedrag then went silent. Issei did as he was told and watched Riser as he slowly approached him. Riser is going to enjoy turning you into nothing more than ash. Sorry. Sis, but I'm gonna have to kill your crush, it can't be helped. Ha ha ha. Dot ooh. Riser stopped walking while his grin turned into a grimace. What the, fuck. Everyone's eyes widened as a burst of blue-colored fire punctured its way out of Riser's stomach. Ouch, that hurts. What is this? Riser was trying to put this burst of blue-colored flame out however nothing he did help the situation. Ah, it burns. It hurts. 
Issei tilted his helmeted head as he spoke to Dedreg in his mind. Dedreg, did we do that? Correct partner. Compliments of your new magic reserve. Remember who's responsible for that. Issei smiled warmly under his helmet. Yasaka, it's just like when she used her fox fire on Rainier, in my dreams. So, can I use it too? Dedreg softly laughed to himself before speaking again. Just stop doubting yourself and realize that you aren't alone. Now, unless you want your future brother-in-law to die, I'd suggest putting that foxfire out. Even the likes of a PHENEX devil cannot hope to survive the intense heat and spiritual power of foxfire. Issei watched for a moment as Riser Phoenix flailed around while attempting to stop the blue and bursting fire from spreading further around his body. Issei blinked a few times and then calmed himself. As Riser was the one now, rolling on the grass, the painful and draining blue flames suddenly began to dissipate. At the same time, the drag proudly announced. Reset. Still on his one knee, Issei's armor vanished into crimson granules of sand before disappearing altogether. He was barely keeping his eyes open as his sweaty bangs covered them. Seraphal jumped into the air while suddenly holding a pair of pink and purple milky spiral brand pom-poms. Winner, Issei Hyodo. Sona darted toward Issei while glaring at her immature older sister. Yusaka stays back with Riser's parents while quietly engaging with them in whispers. Subaki followed her king closely behind while showing a hint of concern in her usual stoic face. Ravel also chose to run into the lawn where her brother was laying. Issei was managing to not pass out however his vision was blurry and his strength was all but completely sapped. Still on one shaking knee, Issei looked up when he heard Sona's voice calling for him. By the time Ravel made it to her brother, she showed a deep look of concern. Brother, are you alright? Get out of the way, Ravel, Riser quietly spoke up. Looking behind her, she noticed that Issei was kneeling while staring toward a fast approaching Sona. What are you going to do, brother? Ravel held her arms out, blocking Issei from her older brother's vision as he sat up. I said, get out of the way. Riser immediately pushed Ravel out of his way before manifesting a large fireball. Take this, you cheating bastard. Riser then stood halfway while gripping the fireball tightly and then tossing it as if it were a baseball. Sona widened her eyes at the incoming ball of flames, headed directly for an exhausted and immobile Issei Hyodo. Issei. She held her arms into the air as a large bubble of water jiggled over her head. Seraphal threw down her pom-poms as her eyes began to glow the color blue. A large manifestation of ice magic began to gather in the Moa's hands. Tsubaki summoned Mirror Alice and sent it toward Issei as fast as it could move. However, to everyone's surprise, especially Lord and Lady Phoenix, a sudden and yellow-colored flash moved about the entirety of the Phoenix's estate backyard. Moving from place to place, it then stopped directly in front of Issei. It was Yusaka, but in her true fox form. She stood 20 feet tall as her golden yellow fur fluttered from her movements. With her mouth completely open, her many sharp and perfectly flawless teeth were exposed. As her gigantic nine tails fluttered in a circular pattern, the gigantic Kitsune swallowed the fiery attack brought on by a now terrified Riser Phoenix. Falling back onto his butt, Riser was using his legs to scoot backwards from the now approaching and growing Yasaka. Oh shit oh shit, mom, dad, help Riser. Ravel backed away however the gigantic fox turned her head while seemingly taking a break from her grudge only to smile toward the little Phoenix devil. But that only lasted for a moment as Yasaka turned her attention back toward Riser while baring her sharp teeth. Sona, Tsubaki and Seraphal looked back toward Lady and Lord Phoenix. They were simply nodding at one another and then, with approving smiles gave the fox queen a thumbs up. Yusaka's form immediately reverts to her humanoid Kistun form in a blinding yellow flash. Before Riser can make sense of anything, he feels himself being lifted into the air while suddenly being forced against what felt like a knee. Coming to his senses, the blonde Phoenix devil found himself leaning over Yusaka's knee. His arms and legs couldn't move however he felt the back of his maroon pants, being pulled down, exposing his bare ass. What's going on? Release Riser immediately. Riser was attempting to flail a way out of his position, but all seemed impossible. Era era, your sportsmanship is beyond unacceptable. I don't blame your parents of course, but I believe you are in need of a serious attitude adjustment. For that, you will suffer the pain of 9,999 spankings, right here and now, all at once. Prepare yourself, 
Young Phoenix, for you are about to feel the power of the ancient Kitsune, on your behind, of course era era. With an intense grin, Yasaka's nine tails all began to flutter around Riser bared as before. Slap, 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 Riser immediately cried out in pain. Please, ouch, stop, ouch, mom, ouch, dad, ouch, do something, ouch ouch ouch. Yasaka laughed in a maniacal fashion as she increased the speeds of her spankings. After a few more moments, the fox queen's tails looked as if they were all spinning in a wheel as the slapping sounds got faster and faster until it became nothing more than a loud hum. Ravel watched her brother cry out in agony, however, she couldn't argue that he didn't deserve every single spanking he was receiving. She watched time and time again, spoiled riser, always getting his way. Well, Ravel thought, looks like you're getting yours. Sona's Chance, a high school DXD fanfiction written by Christopher Zazel. Chapter 70, Aftermath, Ouch, please, stop, Riser is very sorry, Ouch, please, Yusaka-sama, Ouch, Riser continued to cry as he was helpless against the overwhelming power of the Fox Queen while he could do nothing aside from lay over the knee of the opposing Nine Tail. Meanwhile, Yusaka stares back over at Issei with her usual casual and crescent-shaped smile, as her tails continue to torment Riser's bare ass, relentlessly spanking in a mechanical fashion. You did very well, my Issei. I am so very glad that your wonderful dragon Kun was willing to work with me. I'd say we did a pretty good job, don't you think? Issei was now being held up by his shoulders using both Sona and Tsubaki as his support. He smiled back weakly, however he continued to involuntarily flinch from the sounds of Riser's painful pleas. Then suddenly, Issei's arm began to glow in its usual crimson and emerald color. Lady Yasaka, yes indeed. I can tell that there is a noticeable difference. In my partner's soul, I am personally grateful for all of your help. Suddenly, Issei's arm flickered. As for you, partner, you'd better worship the ground your wife walks on. Issei suddenly got a sweat drop on his forehead while smiling awkwardly. Sona noticed while puffing her cheeks out in a grumpy manner. She then tightened her grip on Issei. Yasaka began to laugh loudly with her kimono sleeve toward her mouth. Foo 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 foo. Era era, you flatter me. As she continued to laugh, her tails were rotating in a wheel-like fashion, continuing to mechanically spank the now screaming riser Phoenix. Ravel suddenly appeared in front of Issei while showing a warm smile. Um, well, suddenly the Phoenix heiress pulls out a gold-colored vial from her dress. This is for you, be grateful, after all, a favor such as this is a great honor. She then proudly smiles as she hands the vial toward Sona's free hand. Raising an eyebrow, Sona shows an expression of astonishment. Phoenix tears. Interesting. Ravel nods proudly and then places her arms against her waist. Well, what are you waiting for? Drink up. She then shows a small scowl toward Issei as if she was getting impatient. Issei blinked a few times and tried to push down at the ground with his legs. Feeling that he was steady enough, Issei looked at both Sona and Tsubaki. I think I can stand on my own now. Thanks for the support though. Issei smiled. Sona and Tsubaki looked at one another and then nodded. Once his arms were free, Issei received the golden vial from Sona before studying it. He then looked back toward Ravel while the Phoenix heiress was tapping her foot in frustration. Okay. Well, bottoms up. Smiling, Issei pulled the small vial top and proceeded to drink the golden colored liquid inside. It tasted very sweet even though everyone was calling it tears. Then, as if time had been reversed, Issei's body felt as it did before the fight with Riser. Wow, holy hell, what is this stuff? Issei was jumping up and down while stretching his body, then he jogged in place while smiling like a buffoon. I feel like I can take on the world. He then looked down at a very happy looking Ravel Phoenix. Thank you so much, Ravel Chan. Meanwhile, Yasaka's loud decree got everyone's attention. And that last one will be 9,999 spankings as penance for your terrible sportsmanship. Let this be a lesson to you, little boy. Yusaka suddenly stood up as Riser fell off of her lap and onto the grass. Era era, I think I got a workout from that. She then stared back at Lady and Lord Phoenix while showing a respectful smile. Please, let me know if you have trouble with your son in the future. I'd be more than willing to correct him for you. She then bowed toward the very satisfied looking Phoenixes. Meanwhile, 
Riser was weeping as he pulled his pants back up in shame before storming back into the mansion while keeping silent. Seraphal then speaks up while casually stretching her arms out. Well, everyone, I think we've taken enough of our host's time. Ready to head back, Ravel looked up at Issei suddenly as she smiled excitedly. What kind of mansion do you live in, Issei Hyodo? Scene, Hyodo home. Both of Issei's parents are in the kitchen while helping each other to prepare some evening tea. Then suddenly, a blue-colored teleportation circle began to manifest in the nearby hallway. Shocked at first, Mickey then showed a warm smile. Looks like the rest of the family is home. Should we wake our granddaughter and little Rias? Mickey blushed. Adjusting his glasses, Mr. Hyodo turned his attention toward the living room, where little Kuno and little Rias were laying on the couch. They were originally watching some cartoons but seemed to have fallen asleep while they shared the couch blanket. Before he was able to reply, a sudden blue flash got his attention. Blue flash, a larger group of women along with Issei appeared. Sona, Tsubaki, Seraphal and Yusaka all smelled the air while looking toward the Hyodos, who were preparing tea. Mickey giggled while reaching for more tea and another tea kettle. Suddenly, walking from behind Issei was a new girl that the Hyodos were not familiar with. Um, son, are you going to introduce your friend? Mr. Hyodo adjusted his glasses one more time while noticing the little blonde Ravel Phoenix. E.H.H., a foreigner. Mrs. Hyodo giggled suddenly. Well, it seems we have three new girls all in one evening, hehehehe. <laughs> Issei tilts his head in confusion. Three. He then stares at the couch only seeing Rias and Kuno before shrugging his shoulders in even more confusion. Meanwhile, Ravel makes a small bow before showing a gracious smile. Greetings, Mr. and Mrs. Hyodo, for I am Ravel Phoenix. Her smile turns into a forced one as she takes a look around at the surroundings of the Hyodo home. I see that you enjoy the simpler things in life. Yusaka proceeded to slowly remove her signature paper fan from the inside of her kimono. Mickey turns around while looking back at the little blonde girl while smiling warmly. Well, from the sounds of it, you must come from a very important family, Ravel Chan. I am sure that our humble abode must be quite modest compared to what you might be used to. Yusaka speaks up while showing an angry smile. Mrs. Hyodo, you have a lovely and rustic home, please don't allow the arrogant words of a child make you feel otherwise. With that, she then took her paper fan and slapped it across one of Ravel's blonde drills. Getting the point, Ravel immediately bowed toward Yusaka while remembering what had happened to her brother, not moments ago. I'm sorry, Yusaka-sama. Nodding, Yusaka slowly patted the girl on her head while winking back toward Mickey. Winking back, Mickey couldn't help but respect her son's new and older wife. Suddenly the sounds of movement from upstairs got some of the group's attention. Who's upstairs? Issei pointed upward. Oh, haha, ha, them. Mr. Hyodo giggled slightly. Before anything else could be said, Rias seemed to have woken up and her little blue eyes were immediately trained on Issei. Suddenly a red-colored blur made its way from the living room couch and had attached itself to Issei's leg. Looking down, Issei met with the eyes of his miniaturized master, Rias Gramori. Issei, you're back. I, I, I need to tell you this right now. Rias began to tear up. Looking at everyone else around him, Sona, Seraphal, Yusaka and Tsubaki gave Issei the go-ahead as they each nodded at him. Meanwhile, Ravel was shocked to see Rias Gramori in such a state, however, she was unfamiliar with the situation that was happening, so she remained quiet. Suddenly, walking down the stairs was both Kuroka and Ophis. Each of them stopped the moment they were noticed. Issei, with Rias attached to his leg looked at the two girls before turning back toward his mother. Mom, you said three ladies, right? Issei lifted an eyebrow. Mickey happily nodded. Oh yes, poor Ophis Chan and Kuroka Chan don't have anywhere to go, so I thought it best to have them live with us. Issei looked down at Rias who was puffing her cheeks out. It's fine, don't worry about it, Issei. Rias shook her head, considering all that's happened, I just gave in. Issei tilted his head at Rias's casual behavior before turning his attention at Ophis and Kuroka. Really, you, don't have anywhere else to go. Aren't you in charge of some terrorist group or something? Both Kuroka and Ophis looked at one another before looking back toward Issei. Kuroka smiled cutely while holding her hand. Out like a pet cat would. Meanwhile Ophis did nothing aside from smirking ever so slightly. It's fine, Issei, can we talk now? 
Rias was now pulling on the teen's shirt. Yeah, I guess we can talk about this later. Let's go to my room then. Issei then walked with Rias toward the staircase. Once the bedroom door closed, Mickey suddenly giggled into her hand. Oh dear, the anticipation. Mr. Hyodo put a finger toward his lips. Quiet, honey, don't let them hear us. Sona looked around the room and then back toward Mickey. What's going on? Kuno suddenly woke up on the couch before her little ears twitched a few times, hearing the conversation. Yawn. Good evening everybody. Hi mommy. Did Rias give Issei the thing yet? Yusaka suddenly began to laugh into her kimono. Sona adjusted her glasses while looking at the fox queen in suspicion. You know something, don't you? Seen Issei's bedroom. At first, both Rias and Issei were very quiet. They were sitting side by side on his bed while staring at seemingly nothing. Suddenly, Rias began to speak quietly. So, I'm a really bad president, bad friend and bad person. Rias is about to continue, however Issei tries to say something. But that's not, Rias interrupts. Let me finish, she then turns her commanding blue eyes onto Issei, even with her short size, there was still some intimidation behind her gaze. I'll admit it, at first, I didn't care about you. I used you in order to save me from a marriage that I wanted out of. I exploited your perversion in order to get results. I even left you alone shortly after turning you into a devil, just to verify that your sacred gear was worth my time and pieces. You almost died a second time because of that, at the hands of Donacy. Taking a step back, Rainair was your first love interest and she killed you. Without even a second thought, I didn't consider the possibility of any post-traumatic stress disorder affecting you. But then, after some time, I got to know the real you. I knew you were hurting and did nothing. Sona is right, I knew about your nightmares. Instead of talking to you, like I should have, I instead just ignored it as I held you close at night. I thought perhaps you would find peace with me. Issei tilts his head while not showing any specific emotion. Rias wipes her teary and puffy eyes before continuing. Well, after getting to know the real you, I realized that I made a serious mistake. You were always there for me, no matter what. You were there for everyone even those that treated you terribly like Kaneko. Of course I fell in love with you, Issei. When you told me that you wanted to go steady, I was being selfish and wanted to enjoy some casual time before, before, Rias took a large gulp. Before marriage, Issei. Shocked at her words, Issei sat still and continued to listen. My big brother, my mom and dad, they accepted my request to have you as my fiancé. It was arranged shortly after the battle with Riser Phoenix. I was just afraid to tell you. I didn't want things to get too complicated and again, I was being selfish. I'm a bad person, Issei. Rias breaks down into a crying fit. Issei, on the other hand, softly begins to smile. I see. Rias feels Issei's arms around her. E e e e. It's okay. Rias, it's okay. Issei closes his eyes while smiling as he hugs his miniaturized master. Unknown to the couple, Yusaka was watching them through the closet door mirror. Smiling, the fox queen begins to silently chant. Issei notices that his arms are being forced apart while Rias's side of the bed seems to be gathering mass. Suddenly, both release each other from the hug only for Issei's eyes to widen. Rias, you, you, you're big, Issei's eyes immediately were staring at a fully grown Rias's large breasts, which ripped. Out of the tiny shirt that she was wearing, you've got opai. Rias breaks away from the hug and immediately looks down at her own body. Smiling, she looks back toward a bewildered Issei while immediately placing both of her arms around his shoulders. Before he knew it, Issei's face was pushed in between Rias's bare breasts. Issei, Issei, Issei. Rias continued to shout as her watery blue eyes stayed trained down at her muffled pawn. I'm not letting go, not ever again. Issei's face was being assaulted by Rias's bouncing cleavage and she continued to bop up and down with him in her arms. Issei was feeling overwhelmed at his current situation. Suddenly, Rias released him before blushing deeply. Oh, I forgot. Issei, close your eyes, please. Seeing a practically naked Rias Grimori in front of him, Issei did the best he could to force his eyelids to close. Once they were closed, the sounds of a magical circle activating made the team more curious as to what his master had planned. Feeling something being placed into his lap, Rias then spoke up with a smile. Open them. Lifting his eyelids and looking toward his lap, 
an onyx colored box was noticed. Looking at the item and then back at Rias, Issei smiled warmly. What's this, Rias? Issei tilted his head in curiosity. Widening her eyes, Rias's smile increased. You called me Rias. Before Issei could respond, Rias shook her head and tried to get back toward the subject at hand. Well, that can wait. Oh, the box, well, it's for you. She then looked back toward the box and slightly shivered. Just um, be careful, okay. Looking down at the box, Issei tilted his head in anticipation before carefully opening it. It's a, it's a, it's a, Rias, you got me a slime. Inside of the box was a shapeless, green-colored and small slime monster. It started the move the moment its enclosure was opened. Before Rias could reply, the said slime proceeded to extend its little body all the way toward Issei's face before seemingly giving him a kiss on the cheek. Oh wow, it's friendly. Issei smiled warmly before getting a better look at it. Taking it from the box and holding the slime in his hands, the teen couldn't help but wonder if this was the one that he met back when the peerage visited the familiar forest. But he was sure that the girls had destroyed it. Deciding it couldn't hurt to ask, Issei did just that. Hey, little guy, you're not the one I met back then, right? Suddenly it began to make random movements while flailing its tiny appendages. No way, seriously. Issei was transfixed on the little creature. Again, it made a similar movement as before, as if it was answering Issei's question. Rias began to sweat drop mildly, as she remembered what her and the peerage did during their first slime interaction. Meanwhile, unknown to both Rias and Issei, the slime was having a reminiscent moment. It remembered how much praise it got from this devil, the first time they met. In fact, it was stricken by the teen's favorable words toward it, as nobody has ever praised it like this teen has. And in fact, it was those very praises that allowed it to continue to survive, even after almost totally being destroyed by. Suddenly, the slime turned its attention toward Rias. That's all for now smiley face.